Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We are on a nice little walk. Uh, I'm not sure what time it is. It's after lunch. I know that. And uh, this is Aspen here walking beside me. And we are just going down the road that leads to and from my home. And we're going for a nice little walk. Let me back this out a little bit so you can see her a little bit better. Now, Aspen, when I first got her, uh, I don't know if we could have gone on a walk like this, to be honest with you. And uh, she was a puller. You could put her on a leash. And if you uh, had some snow on the ground and you were sitting in a sled, you could probably, whoa, whoa, whoa. You could probably go across the yard at a pretty fast pace. Good sit. Good sit, Aspen. Good girl. So we're sitting here at the intersection of Deer Meadows Road and 2000 East. Here it is, here it is. It's a beautiful day, it's very sunny. It's uh, fairly warm and it is very humid, very humid. Um, so just real quick, I thought I'd just go ahead and use this opportunity. When you guys are coming to drop your dogs off for boarding and training, or you're coming to pick up a new puppy that's been trained or, or whatnot, as you come down this road right here, okay, I am the first left-hand turn, I'm sorry, first right-hand turn that you can make down Deer Meadows Road. So as you come down 2000 East, which is way out here, there it is, right there, you come down 2000 East, you're gonna make your first right-hand turn on Deer Meadows Road, and that's where we're at. Okay, and then as you drive down Deer Meadows Road, and the spin, 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 there we are. As you drive down Deer Meadows Road, there's a car coming behind me. <laughs> and of course Aspen has to look and see what's going on. Come on girl, heel. You're gonna notice that it's a no outlet. So there's only one way in and there's only one way out. All right, so back to Miss Aspen here. When we first got her here, uh, it was, like I said, I don't think we could have uh, done this little walk here without being drug all over the place. Now, as you can tell, we're going on a nice little walk with Aspen. Now, she does have a tendency to get excited as she might see something and she might want to jet out ahead of me a little bit. But all I'm doing is... <laughs> them dogs got your attention, don't they? All I'm doing is applying a little bit of pressure with the prong collar. Come on, sweetheart. Stay focused now. Apply a little bit of pressure with the prong collar. And it basically puts it right in line. Either if she gets too far, if she gets it distracted by the dogs. <laughs> come on, come on. No, 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 no. No, no. She can see him now. Come on. Okay, and we just keep going. Okay, so as we're walking, okay, I cannot see my screen and my phone. I have no idea what I'm videoing. As we're walking, we just keep moving at a nice gentle pace, okay? And she sees me, she watches me and sees that I'm not paying attention to the dogs. I'm not gonna stop and let there be a visual, a long visual, hey, 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 hey. No, no. I don't know if you saw that in the video, but she tried to go after the butterfly there and it. she wanted to what they call, or what is referred to as lunge, and we're not doing that. So, let's go, uh, like to discuss, not really discuss that matter, but we don't want dogs lunging, okay? Come on, get, get right beside me here. There you go, good job, good job. So, I don't want dogs lunging, okay? 
when a dog starts lunging, that means I can't trust them in their behavior. Okay, as they start lunging, next you know they're bolting. As they start lunging at this and that and the other, they'll start bolting. So if, if they see a butterfly, they lunge toward that and they lunge toward this, they lunge towards that. They're making up in their minds that they're willing to bypass the rules and we can't have that. So we're gonna use the word no for that, okay? Again, the word no, what that means is what you're doing is not acceptable. The word enough means what you're doing is okay, but not right now, okay? So we have to distinguish the differences between those two words for the dog's sake and really for our sake. That way we can have a command to say enough. So if the dog's barking, okay, this way, sweetheart, there you go. And the reason I'm walking on the grass is to keep her off of the, the hot pavement. I know that's kind of a duh, but um, for maybe not for some, I don't know. I want to keep her off of the hot pavement for her feet, so that's why we're walking in the grass. Anyway, so if a dog's barking, what we really should be saying is enough. Because a dog barking, there's nothing wrong with a dog barking. But sometimes a dog barks for multiple different reasons, okay? And in our minds, we think the dog shouldn't be barking, right? So I gotta get in the shade, and I don't even know if I'm getting her in the in her in in the camera or not. Oh, I pushed the wrong button. There you go. Whoa. You gonna sit? That's a good girl. That's a good girl. We're in the shade now, aren't we? Good, Aspen. You're doing a great job, and you've come a long way. Good job. So if we got a dog barking, we're gonna say enough, meaning what you're doing is okay, but not right now, okay? Telling a dog not to bark is like someone coming up to you and telling you to shut up. You know, uh, don't communicate. Well, the dog's barking for a reason. So we've gotta understand why the, why the dog's barking, okay? So in many cases, the dog is barking. It's a territorial bark. Oh, there's a trail camera. Uh, it's a territorial bark. It could be an aggressive bark. It could be like a backup, I'm gonna bite you bark. It could be a greeting. It could be, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to my area. I wanna play. That kind of a bark. It can be a warning bark, like warning, warning, somebody's here on the property bark. It could be a breeding bark. It could be all sorts of barks. Most of the time, when we get dogs barking uh, in a way where we say, tell them to stop and say no, it's because they're bored, okay? Same thing with digging holes, same thing with eating grass, same thing with uh, eating things in the yard they shouldn't be eating, they're bored, they're bored, okay? They're very bored. I don't know, a lot of, this, this is going to hit a lot of families here on this comment, but a lot of us have backyards that are all fenced in. And so we let the dogs go in the backyard and do what they want. Oh, good girl, Aspen. Good girl. So we allow the dogs to go in the backyard to play in the yard, and we think, what harm can they get in? They have the freedom. They can run around, do what they want, and so forth. Well, what they don't have is the interaction that they need in the backyard. So what happens? They start digging holes because they feel moles perhaps. They start chewing up the landscaping, digging in the landscaping, chewing up your plants, digging up your mulch, and they get themselves in trouble, okay? So that's why it's very important that we understand why the dog is doing what they're doing. Okay, a lot of the times it's boredom, okay? So, you know, instead of letting, you know, let the dog go outside, go potty, let the dog go outside, do their business, and then we get involved in their activity as far as exercise. You say, I don't have that time frame to, to, to do that at, the, at that given point. Okay, say, uh, uh, let's say mom is, uh, let's say it's 4.30, the kids have come home from school already, it's absolutely crazy, we've gotta let the dog out, the dog goes to the door and says, I gotta go potty, so you let the dog go outside, go potty, you're trying to get everything situated, it's absolutely going crazy, 
you forgot the dogs outside and so forth, okay? And then all of a sudden you go outside and the dog has created a habit now because this has happened over time and time again. We've got holes in the ground or we're digging in the mulch and this and that and the other. So what we need to try to do, if we can, is to delegate some of our responsibilities, okay? So say we got little Junior and little Missy, well, maybe perhaps we can pass along those responsibilities to little Junior or Missy so that uh, perhaps that would help out with the load of, 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 of your responsibility or so forth. Or we just have to say, hey, you know, a little bit more self-discipline and say, hey, I've got the dog out there. I've got to remember to get back to it and this and that and other so the dog don't get himself into trouble, okay? You say, well, it's not that big of a deal. Well, it's not that big of a deal as long as everything's going as you see it. But what happens is, is the dog ends up getting into uh, rabbit fecal. The dog ends up getting into other things, okay? The other thing that we need to be worried about is when we start digging into the holes or digging holes in the ground, we're turning over the soil. And believe this or not, folks, there is fungus in Illinois soil. And I don't know, you know, wherever you may live, there might be the same situation, okay? So if you're digging up that soil, a lot of your diseases are in that soil, all right? So I'm not saying this to scare everybody, but if you knew what was in the, sco in the soil, it would scare you. But the point is, is this, is, you know, the dog's uh, immunity is strong enough to fight most of it off. However, if the dog's immunity does go down, it could cause the dog to get sick out of some weird, strange things happen, and you're like, what just took place? Well, if your dog's digging holes and turning the dirt over all the time, that could cause those issues. So what looks to be merely not that big of a deal could turn into a big deal. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful there. Aspen, let's go inside, sweetheart, you're hot. Okay, we're sitting in the shade. I thought I'd give you a break and talk to everybody. Okay, let's, let's go, come on. Yeah, you're hot. So hopefully that's helpful to everybody. Uh, as me and Aspen goes on a nice little walk, she is a sweetheart, folks. She is a doll. I mean, she, number one, I've got to say, like, if I had my personal pick, like, what I would choose a female to look like, Aspen, she is, come on, honey, come on, heel. She is that dog. Let me give you, a, just real quick here. Let me give you a, whoa, sweetheart, sweet, whoa, whoa, sit. Let me give you a look at her. Oh, <laughs> you gotta stay, stay, stay. Oh, there you go. She's got a nice big head. She's got a nice thick chest. Her chest, well, she ain't gonna let me show you. She's got a nice big chest. She's got a solid body to her and she's got a beautiful tail. It's not really long and it's not really short. It's like propor her proportions are just absolutely perfect. <laughs> and she's gonna got nice dark eyes. Look at her eyes, see how dark they are? She is just, I mean, just a perfect, perfect build and perfect, I mean, she just absolutely, and this is my personal preference. I'm not trying to say this is how a labs should look like every time, because we've got other puppies that are here that don't look like this, but if I had my preference as far as build, you'll, Oh, oh, Aspen would be the, would be the pick for me. She is absolutely beautiful. Well, folks, another video. And uh, I ask again that you subscribe to the channel. I feel like I'm a broken record on that, but please subscribe. And uh, we keep bringing content to you guys. I can be reached with any questions, concerns, content ideas from my Facebook page. My phone number is on there. You can see it. My email is on there. You can reach me that way too. And until then, of the next video coming out, and uh, we have that available for you, we'll see you then.